do you also want to get one of the best summons in Elden Ring? Coolest armor sets and this really amazing weapon all from the same quest line? You do? That's good, man. That's real freaking good. You came in to the right YouTube video because today we're gonna take a look at a really awesome quest line for a really awesome character and how to not miss out on all of these amazing rewards. Now, let's begin with the quest line because it begins once you unlock the Altus Plateau for the first time. You can go back at the round table hole as soon as you do that and you're going to notice that the dung eater will be inside this room that just opened up behind the twin husk maidens go ahead talk to him and he's not going to tell you much unless you also got one of those seed bag curses but you won't want to care about that yet that's going to come a little bit later in the meantime we will make some preparations that will be important later down his quest line so this will bring you to Rani's rise and specifically we need a potion from Selvis that he gives us at the very start of his quest line you don't need to progress through Rani's quest line, you can go ahead, talk to her and begin that part, but after you've done that, you can go ahead at Selovis Tower, talk to him and find out about his master plan, which is basically going to give you this potion right here now hold off giving this to anybody for now this is going to also come in a little bit later and for now you will want to head over to the royal capital once you pass the east ramparts what you want to do is to head over through these walls all the way into this larger building and use this elevator to go downside once you reach the second building kill the enemy and use these ladders to go to the next floor which is going to be very important because from here you will want to take the stairs up top and here is where you will find your very first seed bed curse this is essentially the item that you need to present to dung eater so he can respond to you in the first place point at which he will tell you the fact that his real body is located in a dungeon somewhere below the capital and in the process he also gives you a sewer key now with this key what i want to do is to reach the sewers of lindell so head over in the capital again until you reach the avenue balcony from this point on simply follow my path right here to the left side jump over these roofs up until you see this well that you can use to jump down in the sewers open up the gate and simply make your way down like how I'm doing right here until you reach this side of grace right at this point in the subterranean shunning grounds from this point on there's just a couple more steps so head over north up until you see these open grates in the ground jump down and then follow up again the path north and then take a sharp left left right here through these poisonous flowers climb up the ladder and from this point on all you have to do is to just well take down some of these hand enemies and dung eater will be in the cell behind this door that you can go ahead and open up with that key now it's super important to not kill the real body or attack it yet yes that's going to drop his well armor set early but you're going to be locked out of his other cool items in the quest line so for now just pick the option to leave the gavel and head over back to the round table hold here you're going to see that his summon is now missing and in its place there's a message prompting you to go around the north side part of lindell right here into this small lake so head over there and here is where you will get invaded by the character and you will want to go ahead and defeat him once you do that you're going to notice his first item dropping which is going to be the sword of milos in terms of requirements it's not too bad only about 19 points into dexterity and about 15 into strength but it also comes with the shriek of milos active ability which is kind of like a more powerful version of the war cry as in you don't just get to debuff enemies defenses with this it also has a high range and it further buffs up your damage and not only that it also changes the heavy attacks on your weapon so now you will do a different chain of attacks compared to its default version overall it's also nice to couple this with the blasphemous blade for an infinite sustain kind of build since the sword of melos also regenerates your fp when Whenever something dies around you so between these two items the takers cameo and of course the ancestral horns you can create an infinite sustain build that does not rely on potions almost at all and you can get both hp and fp back on anything that dies around you but this is not where it all ends as i've said once you defeated him his summon will again be back at the round table hold so you'll want to go ahead and talk to him again he's going to tell you that you will want to bring curses about five of them 
them to his body back where you left it in the dungeons below Lindell. But instead of bringing those, you will want to administer Selovis Potion, which we got at the beginning of this route. So this is the one that you want to pick, which will ensure that you don't just get access to his armor, but also his summon. But it will lock you out of getting one of those runes from him, which instead locks you out of the possible endings in the game. So just make sure you know that beforehand. But administer the potion, and once you've done that, also make sure you hit the body so that you can get that armor set out of it. Otherwise, you can completely miss this. Now, the armor is called the Omen set. Obviously, you get to look like Dung Eater, and it's also one of the armors with the highest poise in the game of about 86. At the same time, it also weighs a lot at 55, which means you're gonna have to invest some points to endurance or get some of those weight talismans. Now, each individual piece gives you about 5% additional damage to Bairn spells, so that's 20% in total with the full set equipped. And there's only a couple of Bairn tools in the game that you can use, which look something like this. They can be pretty okay at dealing damage, and they also seem to have a pretty easy time to stagger enemies, kind of like the Rancor spells, but they are a little bit different. It's also the same one that the summon will use, which comes in quite handy, but overall, I mean, the set looks pretty nice. And of course, you also get some really nice poise with it. Now, the only thing left here is to get the actual puppet slash summon with Dung Eater. So what you want to do is to progress a bit further in Selovis questline, specifically head over back to Rani's Rise and go into the middle of these ruins, knock the ground and this will open up a secret cellar. Inside you're going to notice there's a secret puppet for Selovis, go ahead, interact with the message and then if you go back and talk to him, you're going to be able to deconspire him, point at which he's going to share his plan with you. Now what you want to do is to also buy one of the puppets he presents you and also just get all of the spells from his inventory because for some reason this will progress his quest line. Another thing that helped progressing the dialogue is to also head outside of this area, progress the time in a different set of greys and then come back and speak to Selovis again. If you do so, you're gonna have the option to buy a second puppet, point at which you're going to notice that Dung Eater's puppet summon will also be in his inventory. So this means you get pretty much almost everything from the quest line, with the exception of one of the secret endings which will require one of his runes, but that's no longer possible. But you at least get the items and the summon at the same time. But to buy that summon, you do need about five of these starlight shards. And luckily enough, there are quite a few of them in the early stages of the game. So here's how you find the first few of them. You can go ahead here by the Agil Lake Site of Grace, head over south of it, and there's going to be kind of like an air current that will bring you at the top of this cliff. At the end of it, you're going to notice this half piece of a bowl. You can go ahead and take the starlight shard right in front of it. The second one is going to be in this cliff in the Weeping Peninsula in the eastern part of it. You can just head over from the nearby set of grace and it's going to be located again in front of one of these broken bowls. The third one is also quite easy, just southwest of the Stormvale Shack right here at the edge of this cliff. Again, out in the open so you can go ahead and just collect it. Meanwhile, the fourth one is going to be during the mission with Sorceress Elen. She actually rewards this to you after discovering in the Celia Hideaway the body of Lusat. So you do need to progress up until that point, but it's also quite fast and easy, and this is going to give you the fourth one. And finally, for the fifth one, you can just head over to the Lurnia Highway North and just head over, well, north of it until you reach kind of like these cliffs right here by this broken bridge, and you're gonna again find it out in the open. Now, obviously, there's going to be a lot more if you also finish, well, Ronnie's quest line, but that comes in much later in the game, so these ones were way, well, easier to collect. And once you're done with that, you can head over back to Selovis and buy that Dung Eater summon outright, and congratulations, you just got one of the best summons in the game. Now, I'm not sure exactly if this is the best in the game, but it's definitely in the top three right there with some of the others, and it's probably even like in the rank one or two, if you consider it for its amazing tankiness. And also the fact that it can definitely hold off its own against many of the bosses in the game. Actually, it solos a lot of the bosses in the game because of its cool spells. So the first spell you will see him casting is basically his, well, Shriek of Melos, which both debuffs the enemy the same way you do with the sword and also buffs up the summons damage, which actually is pretty nice. So you can not focus on doing that yourself and instead just focus on dealing damage on the boss. At the same time, 
he also can cast Bairn attacks, which will deal quite a lot of damage, like 1500 most of the time, and also can stagger quite a bit, so it's actually quite a decent way of dealing more damage to the enemies. And because his sword also has about 55 points into Blala's build-up, he can definitely stack some more Blala's onto the enemy and also cause that, which comes in quite handy. Overall, I would say that this is a really strong summon, can definitely do a ton of AoE and debuffs, it resists for a very long time and it deals such a nice damage that you're not going to be bothered by it. You're going to definitely want it by your side with how amazing it is. This is it though with the summons. Totally let me know down below if you managed to get all of these or if you did miss any of them. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.